Welcome to the second part of the ArrayList Methods videos. For this example, our old friend NumList is back with the values 4, 5, and 6 added to it. I'd like to show you how to output or traverse the values inside of an ArrayList, and we're going to do that using a for loop. The for loop is going to start at 0, and it's going to go 1 less than size. So we wouldn't say i is less than or equal to the size. We would say i is less than the size because we want to go one less. Because the index is always going to be one less than what the size is. And then inside of our for loop, we're going to use the print method, which uses numlist.geti. And the output would be 4, 5, and 6. And we've added a space between each one. Next, we're going to use a loop. And that loop is going to be a for each loop. It's going to iterate through all of the elements inside of the array list. Where do we get the elements of the for each loop from? Well, the first element is the data type, and that's going to be from the array list, which is integer. Num could be any name, it just represents the elements inside of the array list, a colon, and then finally num list, which is going to be the name of the data structure we're traversing or we're going through. And then the inside of the for loop is going to look very similar to the standard for loop that we had at the top there, except for instead of saying numList.getI, we just use num, which represents the elements inside of the array list. Then we concatenate on a space, and so the output would look identical to the for loop we did above. It would say 4, 5, and 6. Now what if we don't want to use a loop to output an array list? we have a way of doing this. We could use the method toString. So we say system.println numList, and you say, wait, where is the toString method? It's not there. Well, it is there, it's just implicit. If you output an object, it's going to call that object's toString method. And the toString method has a very distinctive flavor to it. It's going to have opening and closing square brackets with the elements inside of there, separated by a comma, then a space, element, comma, space, element. And if we wanted to actually call the method, we could do that. And numlist.toString would output the exact same thing in the exact same way. One thing that I want you to notice here is that in the definition of the toString method, it says it's a string representation of this collection. Don't forget that ArrayList is a collection. And this is important because we have all of these implemented classes down here. And guess what all of them are going to output like? with the values inside of them, it's going to be that same square bracket, element, comma, space, for everything that's implemented at the concrete level of the Java Collections framework. Now in this example, we're starting off with our ArrayList numList, but we're not gonna add any values to it. We're going to call a method named isEmpty. And what isEmpty does just returns true if there's nothing in the array list or it contains no elements, and it will return false if there is something inside of the array list. So in this case, there's nothing inside of the array list. It is empty, so it would return true. The array list is empty. Then if we add some values, then we call the method isEmpty. Instead of saying the array list is empty true, it would say the array list is empty false because there are elements inside of the array list. The next example starts with numList. Then we're going to add the values 4, 5, and 6 to the list. And then the method that we want to focus on in this particular example is contains. And contains is a Boolean method that is either going to return true or false. So if the element is inside of the array list, it will of course return true. If it's not in there, it will return false. So when we're looking for the value five in this particular array list, it would be true and the output would be the array list contains five, true. Now if we tried to look for something that didn't exist, which is 42, the output would be the array list contains 42, false. So a nice searching method contains, it's either going to return true or false, whether the element is inside of the array list or not. So for this one, we're going to start with an array list called numList, and then we're going to add the elements four, five, and five. Notice not four, five, and six, but four, five, and five. And the method that I wanna showcase in this particular example is index of. And what index of does is it returns the index of the first occurrence of the specified element in this array list. So the specified element that we're looking for is five. 
and the output would be the index of the element 5 is 1. And that would make sense because element 5 is located at the first index. Now, if we did the exact same thing again, and we were looking for the element 5, notice that there are two elements 5 inside of this array list. Which one would it indicate? Would it say the index of the element 5 is 1 or 2? Well, it would say 1 because index of just finds the first instance. It doesn't care if there's 100 instances or just one instance. It's just going to find that first instance and return the index. A programmer could remove that element and then run index of again if they wanted to find subsequent elements inside of an array list. Again, it's only going to find the first one. And then finally with index of, what if we're looking for something that doesn't exist inside of the list? We can see down there that there's no element 42 inside of the list. Would it return an error? Would it blow up your computer? Nope. It would just return negative 1. So index of returns negative 1 if this particular array list does not contain the element you are searching for. So index of, it's either going to return the index of the element that you're looking for, or it's going to return negative 1 if it's not in the list. In this example, we're going to start with numList again. We're going to add the values 4, 5, and 6. We're going to output the values inside of there using the toString method. It would say 4, 5, and 6. And then the method that we want to focus on in this particular example is clear and clear is going to remove all of the elements from this array list. Once that method is called, the elements inside of the array list would disappear. And if we were to call the toString method again, it would simply output empty square brackets. So the method clear is going to remove all elements from an array list. So let's go ahead and wrap up all of the elements that we've looked at. The first method that we looked at was add and add is going to add a value at the end of an array list. Don't forget that that e there is just represents element and it's going to be the data type that the array list is. There's an overloaded add method. It's going to find the specified index and it's going to insert the value in the second parameter into an array list. The method get, get is going to return an element at a specified index. Set is going to find an index and it is going to replace a value that is there. So it takes the value, replaces it with whatever value is in the second parameter of the set method. Method remove, it removes a value at a specified index. Remember, it's not searching for an element, it's searching for an index. Finds the index and it removes the element that is there. And don't forget, it also resizes the array list once the element has been removed. Method toString, it's going to output a string representation of the array list. It's going to use that format of square bracket, element, comma, space, and then the next element. And finally, close the string with an ending square bracket. Is empty is just simply going to say whether there are elements inside of the array list by either returning true or false. Contains is just going to say is the element inside of the parameter contains inside of this array list. If it is, true. If it's not, false. Index of, it's either going to return the index where the element is located inside the array list, or it's going to return negative 1 if the element is not inside of the array list. And then finally, clear, it's just going to remove all of the elements from the array list. And one that I did not put here is size. Size is just going to return the number of elements inside of the specified array list. Array lists are such powerful tools inside of Java, and the tools inside of the array list are its methods. And we've gone over a lot of the methods inside of the array list class, but there are definitely a lot more that you could check out inside of the API. Hopefully, this video has given you a strong grasp of the tools inside of the array list class. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.